You're listening to Mondo Cool, the only Dragon Ball movie podcast that gives you a Zenkai boost. That's right, boys. Mondo Cool. Wiggity, what's up, Dragon Ballers? It is time for yet another edition of Mondo Cool. That's our Dragon Ball movie podcast. I am your host, KZ of KZExcellent.com. And as always, I've got the biggest Dragon Ball fans who love every film we watch. That's Dan and Bob Video Games of Gigaboots.com. I like to consider myself the Dark Prince of Dragon Ball Z reviewers. I'm ready with my <laughs> Monster Zero Ultra. <laughs> That's good. good. You love guzzling them. <laughs> yes. And of course, and of course, we have Mr. Feel from Mr. Feel's Wild Ride. I'm, uh, I'm doing some weird Naruto-like hand things to summon mini-me's to do the podcast for me. <laughs> <laughs> They're sucking all of my energy out right now. <laughs> so how this show works is uh, monthly, we sit down and we enjoy a nice Dragon Ball film. We're watching these in release order. Then we come back here, we talk about it, we give a give a review we come up with segments that are still here and then uh you know and 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 then we just get excited just looking at the gra- at the graphs and seeing man this this we're never gonna hit the higher numbers again are we well we'll see though we'll we'll, we'll see but if you'd like to listen to this uh to this show early well you can do that uh feels gonna tell you how because i don't wanna uh you can go to our patreon at patreon.com slash GB podcast. In addition to early access to this show, you get many other benefits such as Cursed Content Club commentary tracks, Cursed Content by Committee, that's our Cursed Content show where you pick the caliber, extended armchair dev bonuses, and uh, other surprises. That's uh, patreon.com slash GB podcast. And now with that out of the way, we of course get to get, (laughs) we get to go to my favorite part of this podcast every time where I get to tell you what we had to watch for this episode. And uh, the newest Dragon Ball movie is Dragon Ball Z Lord Slug, or as it's called in Japanese. Dragon Ball Z, Son Goku the Super Saiyan. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Wow! They keep getting worse. (laughs) How do these keep being It's also wrong. Like, fucking what? <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got that wrong. It was uh, <clears throat> Dragon Ball Zetto Super Saiyajin da Son Goku. Well, now it sounds way better, right, Bob? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now, I know this is always really hard on you, Dan. Uh huh. But could you get us through the broad strokes of the film really fast? Oh, man. Let me tell you. This movie <laughs> is delightful in its originality. <laughs> Uh, man the the earth has has to deal with a giant hurtling steel sphere flying at it and just barely avoids destruction from the earth colliding with it as a uh, krillin and goku try to divert it from smashing into the planet but as it turns out there's a ship that's been implanted onto the surface of the earth by the uh, celestial body and out of it comes lord slug some old piece of shit who's a boomer in Florida who kills people who give him realistic roadmaps for when projects will be done. Oh no. Every time he goes, so how long is it going to have to, how long is it going to be for this planet to get changed and terraformed to be habitable by us? Uh, someone goes, oh, it'll take 10 days. And he just murders them. And he goes, okay, you, you're in charge. How long will it take? And they go three. Can I live if it's three? He's and if a, anyone points out his age, he just kills them. Yes, it's it is so. Don't real. kill me. I'm an essential employee. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, Lord going Slug. to Publix with a gun. <laughs> Lord Slug shows up Publix at 9 p.m. with a gun. Open up! I need my pub shop. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, I couldn't I couldn't listen to this motherfucker and not immediately think it's just some old ass baby boomer. It's Dan, fucking you're dumb. projecting there's nothing boomer like about someone who is old and unreasonable and is responsible for climate change and treats the people underneath him 
intolerably <laughs> and also is completely used to getting exactly what he wants and if he got youth again would just waste it yeah there's nothing and it gets really <sighs> big <laughs> yeah nothing nothing like that not even close um but uh so what you see throughout this film is uh lord slug with his cool ship uh uh, unloading minions that attack people find the Dragon Balls abruptly, which is hilarious because he also only, give, only gives them like three hours to get the Dragon Balls, or was it one? I think it was one. one. Jesus one. Christ. <laughs> he can read minds. Collect these things from... Oh, yeah. He read the script and went, oh, shit, this is an OVA. We gotta move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. He can read minds, Bob. You're totally right. That was a fantastic scene where Bulma was there. And she was like, you piece of shit. You're never going to find the Dragon Balls without a dragon radar. And then he's like, come here. I'm going to grab your face. <laughs> uh, hello, essential employee. I'm going to rub your face. He went full Biden. <laughs> he, he even has takes pills. Yeah, like, it's yeah, true. He he just, pills he eats. He just started <laughs> chopping <laughs> on pills. I hate this so much. It's like World this, Strong gets all over again. There's climate change. It's fantastic. Everyone's all crazy. No one can defeat me unless they ask me to draw a clock after 8 p.m. <laughs> Uh, and so he reads Bulma's mind, finds out about the dragon radar, which is in her fanny pack. He takes it from her fanny pack, and then they... Uh, get the soldiers to get all the Dragon Balls, and then Lord Slug asked to be eternally young, and then the, the dragon's like, well, for this movie, they have determined that I can do this. <laughs> because we're not to the point where they decide the dragon can't do things anymore. <laughs> That's not for a long while. <laughs> uh, so the dragon then uh, gives him eternal youth, which makes him young, and uh, then, then he's cool, and he flies energy beams around his throne room while sitting on it, because he's that badass. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we get some we get some cool battles. I kind of <laughs> skipped over uh, the moment where Chi-Chi had utility. Yeah, she actually did something. Uh, she She started kicking some alien ass to get her son back, and... And then that lasted like 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, she was immediately defeated, but she kicked two guys. It was pretty badass. She did like a flying leap as an explosion went off. And like, I'm pretty sure she clotheslined both of them. Oh, yeah. When he when he transformed, when he gets his wish to become eternally youth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he says it was like waking up from the dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> like waking up from the dream. That's right, everyone. Buying the PS5 will be like <laughs> using the Dragon Balls. <laughs> God. When is that phrase going to stop haunting us? <laughs> hey, it's fine. Because you see the whole plan here of like freezing the planet is just the new cooling system for the new console oh that's a good cooling system hard to overheat when the entire planet's frozen right eternal dragon make the p make the series x load faster than the ps5 can't do that and then he fucks off <laughs> that is too much Bye. i can turn it into a hard drive if you want <laughs> no no uh yeah, no, it's uh, it's, we got some climate change. That stuff's hilarious because uh, Bulma and Chi Chi are trying to drink hot tea and soup and whatever to cope with it, and that's when they realize yeah. Gohan ran off to beat up an entire ship full of aliens. That's because yeah, because Krillin and Goku are missing most of the movie after being blown away by during the uh, whole planet. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, my fucking deadbeat husband's probably dead. Who cares? Yeah, she seemed to not care. She's kind of used to it by now, I guess. At least now he has the excuse to not send me a check. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and then, uh, you know, then, uh, man, it's, it's yeah, kind of... Go Gohan hard, attacks him, and then yeah, Gohan uh, Piccolo him. comes to save Gohan. No, that's true. Then, Piccolo, then Piccolo's like, give me back my Gohan. <laughs> uh, and uh, he starts battling them after they own the shit out of Gohan. That was real bad, by the way. That was dire. Yeah, but that pit, first Piccolo completely owns one of the main crew members. I'm trying to remember which one he eviscerated. <sighs> what was uh, it's it's the big guy that sounds like you doing your dumb voice. Yeah, he's the guy who sounds like Hercule. Yeah, he was Hercule. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> the, the one who's just Dodoria with devil wings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
That was actually a pretty cool fight scene. Like, uh, most of it, Piccolo's kind of co- doing a cool back fly or flying backwards thing while the other guy can't catch him. <laughs> there's, there's, yes, he's rant sonaing at him for most of the fight. Yes. <laughs> I think, I think there's a lot of cool energy with Piccolo fighting, uh, that guy where it's like horror movie almost, but in the US dub, they kind of dub in Piccolo saying some cool one liners. Mm hmm. All of which, while disturbed, plays. When he gets knocked out, knocked off the building, it's just framed like a cartoon. Like it's framed like Looney Tunes. Some choices were made. <laughs> like you expect him to walk back in and get kicked back out the window like it's fucking Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the soundtrack was exceptional, I feel, in the original US release with Disturbed. Uh, and- Two songs. They used Fear as well as Stupefy. And Stupefy is really... Uh, wah, wah. It's uh, very good. Uh, super good. I'm glad they chose an A-list uh, Disturbed song for this instead of some uh, bottom-tier thing. Uh, but yeah, no, we uh, we get some fights with Piccolo. We get some... Uh, then he gets owned. Yeah, then, then he gets owned by them using like Gohan being passed out and like firing a giant beam at him. Yeah, they fire so, a giant so beam he, at Gohan and then Piccolo's like, oh no, I'm going to save Gohan by getting myself owned. Yeah, doing a classic Piccolo and move. And then we see what's under his weighted clothing, which might be the only time we ever see that. Yeah, well, I thought it was pretty neat. I thought it was neat. It's nice cosplay foam, uh, foam shoulder pads. You know, <laughs> it looks like it's made from some industrial foam. Very cool. I thought it was some yep. sort of ceramic, but okay. I understand. It's really it, Mr. Popo made it. It's really dense foam. It was made by Popo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, after that happens, you know, Gohan's... I expected Gohan to be like, oh no, Piccolo was owned to get super angry and get up and do stuff. That's, no, I, that's what they would normally do. But no, that doesn't happen. Thank God. Uh... He's at, he's out of gas. The little goblins were on him for too long and sucked his energy out. They took away his rage boost. Yeah. He's the only character who can have one, but he took but he got it taken away from him. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "Man, we can't keep having this shit happen. We got to just ignore that for one movie." Uh so instead Goku and Krillin shows up. Goku real cool just stands there while a weird frogman generate his face <laughs> mini frogs out of his body and they clasp onto all parts of Goku and Goku just motionless as this occurs and then he's like good now one that one fucks his face that's right now while well, one of them's hugging his face I'm just gonna leap at him and do a cool tech while my other dude holds his legs down and uh he, he one hit kills that guy <laughs> Yeah, no, I thought that was also actually pretty cool. It was pretty dope. He just throws up his fist at his chest and owns him. And then he kills the other guy in a really just surprisingly graphic manner. You know, yeah. okay, so what happens is we have blue guy with his arms under the ground holding Goku's legs down. And he's like, I'm going to use a mouth beam. So he shoots a mouth beam at Goku. Now, what I expected to happen was Goku (laughs) to reach down, grab his hands, and pull him up. Like, as though though he could pull the rest of the body through the tunnel his arms made and make him receive his own beat. That would have been raw. I would have lost it. That would have been Looney Tunes shit. But, uh, no, he does not not do that at all. Um... I was wheezing during that moment of the film. Someone say what actually happened. Because okay, I so Goku throws his own energy beam, which destroys his. Then it flies into his mouth, and he chokes to death on it while his arms flop around like dead fish. <laughs> uh, it was pretty cool. And <laughs> yeah, no, it was really good. <laughs> it wasn't the cartoon that I imagined. But- <laughs> It was pretty cool. Um, you finally woken up from your dream. <laughs> I woke. I woke up from the dream because uh, many things happened in this movie that didn't happen in every other movie. So that was an interesting change of pace. Uh, I liked the setting for this for this movie of just the like the neon city. Yeah, yeah. Look. It it has a very post apoc feel uh, because it's sleazy. It was it was fun. For a setting for once. I, like, I, you don't see anything like this in other DBZ m- movies and uh, such. You see it in the trunk special. Okay. And that's about it. You know, you get that, de- like, destroyed landscape but city sort of vibe. Right. 
But even that, I don't think it like had neon signs and stuff like that, did it? No, it didn't. It doesn't go for the exact same thing. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, then, <laughs> then Goku had. Wait, no, I don't want to skip the best part. When Krillin, after watching Goku own the two, the two generals of uh, Lord Slug, decides, "Hey, I can take off Lord Slug himself." <laughs> <laughs> these guys are all talk let me handle this one <laughs> i don't know what what side of the big dick bed krillin woke up on that morning <laughs> but man that was the worst idea what? he's had in this entire series <laughs> what does he say in the dub as he's getting smacked away like you got this goku <laughs> yes I, it is that it was just, uh, i thought it was something like iconic. why is it only me <laughs> It was something. No, that was in fucking world. That was in world strongest when the same thing happens. <laughs> that, that shit is hilarious. In what world would someone like Krillin think I need to attack the main bad guy? <laughs> the Krillin, you can sense energy. You know he's super fucking badass. He's like, look, maybe I just want to stick my dick in a blender, okay? <laughs> he's like, look. Maybe I've been lying this whole time that I can sense energy. I never do it by myself. <laughs> he just, he, he's peer pressuring it. He's like, oh no, they, they think I can see it too. Might as well pretend. Wow, yeah, he's he's really strong, guys, isn't he? I don't he? have a nose. Let, let's not miss the line before he does that. When, mm -hmm. he, when Slug is coming out and oh, trying to no. get them to join his army, him and G Goku are like, no, thanks. We're self-employed. That I fucking <laughs> yeah. lost it over that line. He's like, hey, fucking you should incredible. join me. Yeah, we, we would no, be he... so powerful. And then, and then f he he literally goes, no, thanks. We're self-employed. And I just fucking lost it. Lord Slug's line is great too because he's like, if you want a job, you apply in the back. <laughs> so fucking nuts. <laughs> Uh, every single good line in this was added in the dub. In yes. The, dub. the, the ja original Japanese has nothing. I figured after, the dub wins yet again. After this many movies, they figured out we need to spice this script up. Yeah. And it went a lot better here, I think, I mean, than Bardock. After fucking yes. Bardock, where, there, where they added 55% more dialogue. Yeah. There isn't a and single also joke Black. in the Japanese version. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um. Well, when you put it like that. So so Krillin gets a uh, final smashed out of the arena. He gets sent off like a Team Rocket member, just flying and becoming a star as he laments the fact he's Krillin. Uh, Goku and Lord Slug, who I'm so close to calling Lord Boomer every time I try to remember his name, uh, <laughs> battle it out in the city, tearing ass through shops. You know, they're just... Stuff's getting pretty real. And then at some point, Lord Slug is what was it part of his part of his outfit gets removed so he just removes all of the head area yeah like his arm gets broken by goku oh yeah so that was fucking real goku goes fake super saiyan which the story behind that <coughs> the story behind fake super saiyan is <laughs> toriyama told them what super saiyan was and then changed it between the release of that movie and it appearing in the manga that <sighs> is of course absolutely believable because, you know, that this was before the I'm going to make the hair blonde so you don't color in the color in the hair in the manga. Yes. Which, as I learned recently, he did. He didn't even do the hair coloring when he did the manga. His assistants did that. So he did it to help them. Jesus Christ. Almost every single thing in Dragon Ball, every <laughs> single thing is the result of Toriyama not wanting to draw something. Characters learn to fly because he got sick of drawing the fucking cloud. Characters learn to teleport because he got sick of drawing them flying. All the Saiyan characters lost their tails because he got sick of thinking about clothes interacting with the tail. Truly. It really helps me appreciate the art. Truly an auteur. My favorite, yeah. to my favorite Toriyama story is when he decided he wanted to draw a cool tank. So he's like, I will draw an eight chapter miniseries about a cool tank. And by the end of it, he never wanted to see that fucking tank again. <sighs> you, you know, when Dragon Ball Super was still airing, it was like halfway through its run, I believe was when they established at Toei, uh, or it might have been Shueisha, the Dragon Ball Room, which was going to be like 
where they do all of the business and they go in and like discuss new stuff that they're working on, like merch and new series and stuff. And Toriyama said, this is great. They pay me so much and I come in once every six months. I would also like to remind everybody that uh, Toriyama once said that his the favorite thing he does is uh, do the designs from uh, Dragon Quest because he can do whatever he wants because he only has to draw it one time. <laughs> yep. this, is, this is brutal. We need out. to... <laughs> Just executing. So, yeah, uh, as we said, he uh, Goku breaks Lord Slug's arm. Uh, and Lord Slug removes his hat to in what would you get headwear anyway to Helmet. reveal he is in fact a Namekian. Ooh, and this is where the yeah. lore goes insane. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, uh, it does. Uh, 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 none of that lore is in Japanese. <laughs> uh, that's not true. <laughs> super Namekian was me? also said in Japanese, so he's still a Super Namekian. But all but all the backstory. What, all the thing, if they tapped into a new consciousness and then the real Namex used the Dragon Balls to (laughs) banish them from the planet? Yeah, no, that stuff was heavily invented, which is hilarious as shit. Uh, Thank you, King Kai. They they needed something. Anything. (laughs) Listen, Goku, I wrote a fanfic on why this guy's so strong! (laughs) Uh, uh, Part of the movie I enjoyed, uh, Goku jumps at Lord Slug at the start of their fight. Lord Mm -hmm. Slug jumps out of the way. Uh, Goku pursues and then Lord Slug punches him in the mouth and he flies down into the city and then Goku says he's picking me apart he hit you once at the very start of your fight yeah no yeah. that was really weird <laughs> I feel like everything before the Lord Slug fight in this movie is amazing and the Lord Slug fight's kind of not great <laughs> what are you talking about the part where Lord Slug hits him so hard that he flies through a door but it's only his head that was really good actually yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's still some good bits during the Lord's like fight, but they just it it's a hole. It goes on a little too long. It's, and it's not as good. Yeah, it has stupefy. Ah. Yeah, no, stupefy was actually ah. I every time everybody references the whole playing disturbed music in these movies, I was like, man, that's gonna go terribly. No, that was raw as hell. Funimation, the original DBZ AMV makers. That correct, and they they still have one more disturbed song to use next time. Yeah, yeah. Plus, we haven't still even gotten work. to the Dream Theater. Oh, that's going to be great. It is. Oh. It's a good memory. It's a good uh, album, Scenes from a Memory. Anyway. <laughs> I can't believe Lord Slug just gets huge and they're like, Super Demekians, I guess. I mean, uh, Pickle got huge during the uh-huh, that's true. Dragon Ball Not original. that huge, though. Yeah, he wasn't quite. Yes, this, is, this is all just, this is just like a beat for beat rehash of the, of the evil King Piccolo shit. So they just stuffed all the evil Piccolo shit in it. He was a, he got big when he was a villain. Put it in. Uh, there was also some lines about like Piccolo was only all that evil because uh, he was half of Kami, the evil half. Um, but also and um, <laughs> why do you so why do you sound like stretch. a ten year old trying to recount a story? Because that's how the story went. <laughs> yeah, mm. <laughs> it was so fucking good. I was fucking losing it. It was like, this is some bending over backwards to explain Please shit. Please do not bully King Kai. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this is really cool. And uh, Goku, listen, right now. <laughs> Mutants. God, I forgot <laughs> about the mutant line. <laughs> Central Park, Goku. <laughs> is this the one where uh, the monkey talks? No, no, I don't think the monkey that has it. Okay, yeah, but it, he has a name. It's Bubbles. It is Bubbles. We respect Bubbles. I remember here. he talks in one of these, and honestly, when King Kai starts talking, I start to zone out. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, the, he can't zone out. That's important lore. You're gonna need it for Bojack. <laughs> that they had to add to the movie. <laughs> so you know, Lord Slug gets really big, and then just starts beating people up, and then at some point. Uh, Piccolo realizes he can leap on Lord Slug's head and grab his antenna because that hurts real bad. And it works for like a second on Lord Slug and then he just fucking owns Piccolo. <laughs> so now Goku and it's Piccolo... It's enough to get him to stop crushing Goku. Yeah, that's enough to get him to stop crushing Goku. That's true. Because he he did just grab Goku shortly after becoming huge and uh, start crushing him with his fist. Yeah, it was a lot like a scene from uh, the Vegeta fight when he turns into the Ozaru. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Goku and Piccolo are owned, and, uh, we skip the most important part of this movie. 
the part that sets up for this part. <laughs> we did. Yes. <laughs> the open the opening scene the opening scene of this movie is so disjointed in such a bad way to open a film because it shows Piccolo and he's like, Ugh, I sure love not having to deal with kids and listening to this waterfall. And then Gohan shows up and he's like, hi, I'm a kid. Want me to whistle so you can't appreciate the silence? And then Piccolo's like, no! And that's that's the opening of the movie. It's like almost a minute of this musical number while Gohan whist- whistles. In Japan, there is a very composed song for that scene. In America, it's a fucking mess. And it's like some voice actor <sighs> trying to whistle poorly as some MIDI sound effects Stop. play. I yeah, may uh good shit. I'm a big fan of how they're like uh they open the movie with well as you know we're at Chekhov's gun store. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean Icarus and Gohan do a little dance number. It's and, better and animated Icarus, than anything in like the last couple movies. And <laughs> it's like I- what is happening? <laughs> and Icarus has some bells. <laughs> yes. And Piccolo is me and he's the audience surrogate as he wants this all to end. He's like, please let this scene end. And I'm like, yeah, I know, right? Uh, so he screams at Gohan to never do that again. Uh, Piccolo, laying wounded on the ground, uh, rips out his ears and then tells Gohan to whistle and do his dumbass song. Which he then does. And Lord Slug is like, no, this is why you ripped your ears off, damn you. And then King Kai is like, he's a super Namekian, yeah. so his earrings like 100 times it's strong. <laughs> <laughs> I love King Kai. <laughs> he's, he's, his role as guy who pukes lore in this movie is hilarious. Uh, then Piccolo holds Goku's hand and gives him his energy. Yes, he, he, he just barely reaches... Uh, Goku, because uh, Lord Slug's crushing him with his hand now, uh, and he just barely reaches Goku to give him all of his life essence. <laughs> and then we get some really cool scenes of uh, Goku yelling as his and Piccolo's life essence flies out. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> and Lord Slug says some shit like, damn you, it's both of you in there. <laughs> as he gets punched. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, Accor- according to a Japanese magazine, uh, when Goku uses Kaioken there, it is Kaioken times 100. Oh, that's important. I thought I it was Kaioken every- times Piccolo. You would think. It totally would be in one of those Budokai games. Yes. <laughs> oh, this isn't Kaioken times Piccolo. It's Daimao Ken. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's kind of wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But but yeah, we get we get some cool powerful punches against Lord Slug, Lord Boomer, and uh he gets fucking owned and he's really upset and uh the, the movie basically Oh wait, no. Yeah, there's well, one no, more thing. No, there's Yeah, the, Goku has to, <laughs> There's the one last Goku thing goes Go to, goes to his home planet cuz he has to destroy the climate change satellite yes. that Lord Boomer put in the atmosphere. They had to do the spirit bomb again. Yeah, I was like, man, I'm really glad the conclusion of this movie doesn't involve the spirit bomb. Then Goku's like, I'm going to fly towards the sun so that way he the chases... The sun is going to make a spirit bomb Yes, the sun, yeah, sun's going to give me its energy for a spirit bomb. When, when did the sun... When when did the spirit bomb become like Birdman? I mean, sp- the spirit bomb <laughs> is technically supposed to be pulling energy from every living thing. Right. Uh, the sun was... is way too far away for that shit to make any fucking sense. <laughs> it isn't living. No, it. it, it uh, no, no, it's it, not. It's fine. <laughs> and he tried to do All the fear fine. bomb earlier, and it's like, no, there, there aren't well, the any clouds, humans left. The clouds were in the way. You can't do it while the clouds. Well, it's very are in the spiritual. Way. The sun is a source of life. The, 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 <laughs> the sun is the source of life. The sun gives him energy. Clouds are not alive like the sun. <laughs> No, you see, this is just like in Bleach when they had that arc where they're like, yo, everything's got a soul. Like, even the sun's got energy. So uh, he uses the spirit bomb. Patreon.com plus GB podcast. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) He uses the sun's soul to (laughs) use a spirit bomb on Lord Slug and the satellite, and they both blow up. And Lord Slug's like, oh, why didn't I wish to be immortal? (laughs) Yeah. Lord Slug's like, here's my dead zone. Even even Garlic Jr. figured that shit out. 
But uh, yeah, that's uh, basically the movie Lord Slug. But but then they had to show Piccolo again without his ears, and then oh, that's true. And they and they just went, and then his ears popped out, and they went, and Gohan went, I get the point, and then I wanted to die. And then they all then they all jumped in the air and high five. Went yeah. Well well KZ, you're forgetting the part where Piccolo was like, actually, it's surprisingly easy to get my ears back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then we're gonna just... get to the Broly movie, and he's like, oh, "Here's my ultimate attack, Kakarot." And he plays up a PSP. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, disturbed music is playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the legendary PSP. Yes. I'm sure the name of that movie in Japan is really good. <laughs> I look forward to All it. Right. But yeah, that was the movie well, Lord Slug. <laughs> it sure fucking was. <laughs> Very good movie. At this, <laughs> at this point, we have to discuss things in the form of three bad segments we still have. They're great. I don't know what you're talking about. Number one is uh, the most disappointing character in the form of the Yamcha Award. You give this out every month to, to whatever it is. You pick a character from this from this film that really, really disappointed you. Uh, gonna give it to Bob first. Oh, I get the easy one then. Um, Krillin. Oh, really? Because <laughs> he's so close to, like, this is where he could have excelled. Like, I feel he could probably have beaten any of those three generals, but they were all owned before he got the chance. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he could he could have at least beaten little frog man. Right? Like, the... And he even teams up with Goku at the beginning of the film to fire Kamehameha's at the at the asteroid. Like that's all really neat. And yeah. he has some good scenes, but he just got so owned. <laughs> you had high hopes. Yes. All right. Well, Dan. Hmm. This is this is complicated. There's so many people I could give it to. I'm gonna go ahead and say Blue Guy General. He oh, he got okay. owned pretty fucking fast. <laughs> He is framed as the strongest one, and then he just dies horrifically, <laughs> achieving nothing. Yeah, yes. he doesn't even have what I would consider a fight scene. No, he doesn't get that. <laughs> it's it's pretty. His main his main technique seems to be grabbing your legs. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> uh, this is my badass general. Oh my god, what does he do? He has a secret technique. He tickles you. <laughs> <laughs> What if I punch him? Oh, please don't. He might die. <laughs> would it be such a tra 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 fucking tragedy if uh, the guy Lord Slug killed in the beginning was like his star player? I think that might be <laughs> what they were going for. Because that guy was the most ripped. Easy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that might be an absolute shame. That's why he's my pick. Commander Z Un. <laughs> oh, man. We forgot to talk about that scene where the three of them just stand at the window and lo look at the progress people are making. The three generals, they're just standing at the window and Slur Lord Slug's thing just shit talking. I thought that was really funny as a scene. <laughs> Z is his name really Z Un though? That's a those they had terrible names. <laughs> yeah, of course. The TBZ movie. I hate I hate this Dragon Ball wiki so much. <laughs> Because I, I had to, I had to look up this character so I would say his name right, and then it goes um, race Slugjin, and what? then I click that. The Slugjin are the demonic inhabitants of Planet Slug. All are members of Slug's demon clan or of this race, and several work under the Frieza Force. There's a line in the uh, Japanese version where they're like, "You're a demon clan. Why don't you join us, to Piccolo?" Yeah, because uh, they're it's implied that those guys are eggs that he spit out like Demon King Piccolo made his own minions that way. Oh, they even kind of have similar designs. I forgot that that was even a thing because it's uh, so yeah. disjointed from everything else in Dragon Ball Z. Like, they just ignore all that happening, basically. <laughs> oh, I see. And then I look at Planet Slug and then it links back to the the dudes from Team Dodoria from the Bardock special. This is fucked up. All right, feel. What's your most disappointing character? Give me your Gohan. Right Gohan. <laughs> here, here, here's what why. He's saying. Normally, Gohan does something. Yeah. And it's usually him getting real mad, so he releases his his angry baby power, and it and it does something. 
<laughs> in this, he gets cartoonishly dispatched when they knee him in the stomach and then put his hat back on him and like tap his nose so he falls uh, down. That was really good. Oh, Hit that one. was so fucking funny. They're like, here's your hat back. Doink. <laughs> uh, then he loses a fight to the generic soldiers. I, I'm not sure what his plan was other than to wiggle back and forth in the air as he got shot to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Chi Chi did well. Yeah. I, she I, kind of did better than him. In a way, she took, yeah. She took out two soldiers, dodged two energy blasts. Then uh, then I think he figures out what Metamach's power is and then still can't do anything and just gets owned. And then his uh, his payoff is he, he whistles at the end. What a good payoff. <laughs> mm. You know what delivers really good payoffs? Mm. Uh, anything involving Jiren from Dragon Ball Super. That's why... In this segment of <laughs> Can They Be Jiren? That's definitely I have what Jiren my friends did. here. You're, you're going to need to find someone in this film who can defeat Jiren. And Dan, you have the honor of picking first. This is the easiest uh, it's ever been, Lord Slug, because Jiren can't whistle a tune to save his life. <laughs> I don't even think he has lips. He's like it, a frog man. Exactly. He's like two bricks smashing together on the front of his face. He looks like the thing if you could draw in that detail. Some sort of rock man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Lord Slug, he's he's very powerful. He has a strong boomer energy. I think he could dispose of Jiren. Jiren just doesn't know how to deal with boomers. At, at worst, uh, or at best, I think uh, Jiren might get furloughed by him. God, you're right. Because fucking... Jiren's a pride trooper. That's an essential employee. Exactly. See, see Jiren will tr will engage, and that's mistake number one. You have to just let the boomer. You just have to let the boomer talk at you while offering nothing. If you even if you agree with them, that'll just gives them incentive to continue talking. Let them say what they want to say because they're only saying it for themselves, and they'll toddle off. Yep, that's one hundred percent. God, it's too real. <laughs> feel, feel. What do you got? Climate change. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. You took mine. <laughs> as powerful as he is, he can't stop climate change. Oh, also, he's cold blooded, so he'll just die. <laughs> huh, Bob? There's not much left here. <laughs> we've already, we've only picked two. Exactly. <laughs> As it turns out, this movie had more choppers than most Dragon Ball Z movies. Right, which is fun to watch. Like, watching Goku own dudes is something I want to see more of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, I like seeing him get over. Let's see. I'm going to say Chi-Chi. I think that she really proved that she could do things this time. Yeah. Uh, kicking those two soldiers, getting really upset at her son that, for leaving. Um, it, oh, that's new. As usual, uh, the ability to nag to death will definitely help her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. Is Chi-Chi the only thing that can defeat... Well, we already established... Here's the thing. We established Jiren is an essential worker. What is Chi-Chi? A Karen? Yeah. <laughs> that that matchup's over. <laughs> she, she's a Karen with the power of an Ox King. <sighs> my dad's really important. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who my dad is? <laughs> Chi-Chi's one of those people who are like, I'm getting the tickle me Elmo for my son and like power bomb someone in the toy aisle of the Walmart. <laughs> yeah, she just lands on two other shoppers, clotheslining them to death. Yes. <laughs> so it's come to me. It's come to me what what my pick would be to defeat Jiren. Uh, Master Roshi. Because in this just movie? like me, uh, Jiren will forget that he was in the movie at all. I mean, his power is and very cannot, unknown in this movie. Like, it's true. He, he sleeps it, through the whole it thing. It is. Yeah. Yeah. He, and you forget. You forget that he was even in the film. Jiren will as well, which means he can't defeat him. And if he can't defeat him, it sounds like he lost. Oh, man. That's <laughs> true. Draws are not true strength. Now I'm remembering that scene where uh, they show the, the gr graphic of what the planet colliding with their planet will do on the news. That was so good. It was the best thing maybe we've seen in any of these that's movies. That's true, and I forgot to mention that. So the newscaster is like, and that's the CG video that people made to show exactly what'll happen in 20 minutes. Fuck this! I'm out of here! I don't want to die in a studio! 
It was really good. I respect that. It was a great scene. Uh, well, you also forgot the part where Krillin suggests genocide. <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm a stand with Krillin on this one, guys. If if, if, if there's some life forms, not many. Yeah, I was gonna say one planet surviving is better than no planet surviving. <laughs> like Krillin remember did Krillin, his best. Remember Krillin? We're just pushing it off course, and Krillin's like, I think we should blow it up. By which I mean you, Goku, because God knows I can't do that. He's advocating somebody else do genocide on his behalf. I, I, it's yeah. on mankind's behalf, thank you. And also, I'd like to note that he was like, man, dis diverting this thing's course is going to be even harder than blowing it up, Goku. With the implied, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure you don't want to just have an easy day and blow it up? You should blow it up. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, Goku, the boss isn't watching. Let's take a three hour lunch. <laughs> look, they could have easily have blown it up and then wished them all back with the Dragon Balls. They could have done that. And the dragon would have been like, sorry, you can't revive aliens. I, I actually, I'm not sure. Maybe the dragon's been flaky up till now. Maybe they know that the dragon will <laughs> arbitrary, like, they'll commit genocide and the, the dragon will be like, no, I can't do that. Well, well, you did whoopsie. it last week. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> this is this Everybody week. gets one. <laughs> I'm hungover. And then he flies back up. <laughs> yeah, he just goes, your wish is ignored. <laughs> <laughs> flies into the sky and explodes. <laughs> Leaving your wish on red. <laughs> the Storm Boomer Dragon. <laughs> oh, this is getting too much. Shinron is the manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. You know, because he bullface lies about what he can and can't do. <laughs> I asked your employee if you had this in the back, and they didn't go check it. Do, do you have that in the back? No. <laughs> Aren't you going to go check? No. 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 <laughs> Feel. You're gonna you're gonna open on this one in which uh, you need to give me a canon Dragon Ball character that you think can beat Lord Slug. Huh. I'm gonna say a canon Dragon Ball character that can defeat Lord Slug is Android Twenty, the fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> or nineteen. Nineteen is the fat. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You see, as was established in that movie, absorbing energy is a top-tier power. Yes. And Lord Slug will try to dazzle him by making those cool balls and throwing him, them all around. And he'll just absorb <laughs> them like Pac-Man and get real big and strong. Yeah, that seems possible. Bob. I'm going to say Android 18 because she's a woman and the boomer won't know or won't respect her enough to not get owned immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, Bob, she's a blonde woman. He's going to send her weird DM. Yes, but that's why that's just get him killed quicker. Yeah, he'll she'll just get him canceled. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't know is that they're going to fight at 4 p.m. So it'll be time for his dick flattening. It's all over. God damn it. Lord Slug will wake up, open up his phone, see Lord Slug is canceled party trending. It'll just hard cut to him exploding in with the satellite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dan, you always have good ideas. Uh, yes, I actually have a fantastic one. I think I have a character that can do it. It's going to be a close battle. Janemba just might be able to beat Lord Slug. <laughs> Janemba is a cannon. What? I have to go with a cannon. How the fuck? I, 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 don't like the I feel like it should be anything. In I, Dragon Ball I don't see the word cannon in this outline. I think you just said that 10 seconds ago. Now you're like, it is. It no, is it, can, it, it was an issue last time. Yeah, too, he, he held it. Which he nobody me. remembers because it was Bardock. Right. He held me to it as well. I was like, nah, screw that. It's dumb. Fine. We could have had a delightful time <laughs> debating the merits of Janemba, but now, now I can't do that. We, we gotta we gotta hold these things separately because this show has to be annoying. <laughs> GTH Emperor Pilaf will get Lord Slug to invest in a really bad business, <laughs> bankrupting the both of them and leaving them to starve on the streets because they're both dumbass boomers. Okay, you're right. This works. 
<laughs> no, this can't be the case. <laughs> Pilaf told me the Iraqi dinar would be worth a thousand dollars now. <laughs> <laughs> he said the UN would force it to be worth this much. He promised. <laughs> I invested in a startup company and everything. <laughs> it was called Juicero. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that, that, that company was definitely propped up by boomers. Well, I like smoothies. <laughs> and I like technology because it makes me money. But yeah, that's my answer. Pilaf, he's, he's, the two of them together seem like a dangerous combination and they'll both kill themselves. Yes. <laughs> Fine. Um, I, reg I regret the thing about the movie now. Now I was thinking, it was like, oh man, the villains from the world's strongest could just turn the climate change off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. And that shit's, that shit's free. <laughs> but I can't do that, so I'll pick Mr. Popo. He's dealt with Namekians before. What would make this any different? Uh, he's really big. <laughs> Sometimes. Way bigger. Super Mi big. Well, Mr. Popo's a problem. Uh, yes. That's a fact. A a Mr. Popo's are taking our jobs, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Only that's just something Lord Slug to told you. <laughs> Not not the CW kids edit where they they made him blue. <laughs> they made yeah, they made him blue. It looked so bad. It was the worst fucking looking thing I've seen in my entire life. We have survived this long. We're almost there. Now I will have us do a review and a score ranging from one to seven for this film. We're gonna open with feel. Uh Lord Slug is better than Tree of Might, sort of. <laughs> I think the sub is actually worse. Because there's just nothing. It, there's somehow less than the Tree of Might in it. Yeah. But the dub Dragon is much Ball better. Always been bad. The dub is much better. So I'm going to give it a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In, I'm going to show it mercy and give it... The, the, I'm going to let the dub prop it up. You're going to rate the dub. I'm gonna rate the dub because you should under no conditions should you watch this subbed. Unless you yeah, just want to be bored and mad. You need stupefy. Quack. 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 Oh, that was really good, actually. <laughs> Bob, what, what, what do you feel? I actually really enjoyed this one. Like, this is uh, some fun fight scenes, a really mm -hmm. interesting plot that's very different from what I'm used to seeing in DBZ movies. It was a cool setting. Um, it's it's honestly right up there, really near Dead Zone. I feel like Dead Zone has some better artistic choices and maybe even better fight scenes. So I'm gonna give this a five. I'm, I'm gonna say Dead oh. Zone's a little bit better than it. Okay, but it doesn't have Stupefy, so it makes it hard. <laughs> 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 well, Dan. How are we feeling? Uh, this movie is delightful in how not like every other fucking Dragon Ball Z movie it is. Uh, a lot of really weird moments and interesting set pieces along with a villain who is a piece of shit. Boomer, I enjoy this movie a lot. Many weird things happen. I like when King Kai starts talking and lore pours out of his mouth <laughs> like a spilled over <laughs> bucket of paint. <laughs> This film got an extra point for me just because of King Kai. <laughs> it really, I was ascending. Um, <laughs> yeah. The the part where the opening scene is uh, egregiously terrible to deal with kind of pays off in a way where it's like, of course, that would kill the bad guy. It <laughs> killed me. Um, I'm going to give this my highest rating. I've given one so far six. I, I think... If every Dragon Ball Z movie was this different and weird from each other, this podcast would be a much more enjoyable experience. <laughs> yes, good lord. Now keep in mind, though, well, my, my Dead Zone recommendation of a 5 out of 7 is that high because it is a good movie and delightful and polished in many different ways. Lord Slug is a 6 because it's fucking hilarious multiple times. <laughs> And it's really neat in multiple different ways. Its fight scenes are maybe not the best. There are a lot of variables here. Sometimes pure enjoyment can push the number higher, but sometimes pure quality will push it that way. That's you true. never know. Look, or maybe everything is just sh shooting off at once and <laughs> giving it a one. Maybe if King Kai says a stupid enough lore bit, you give it a seven. <laughs>
Yeah, so... <laughs> Maybe a peel off my- took a pan full of pills. <laughs> I don't get a seven. <laughs> Not too many Dragon Ball Z villains fucking chop down on pills. Cool. <laughs> Fourth Block is a something I was really looking forward to watching because I had watched it. I, I owned this on DVD uh, years and years ago. And I was excited to watch this again so much that I forgot we were supposed to do it until we started recording today and I watched it. Uh, I enjoyed it. The The fight scenes were cool. I think the overall setting that they spend most of the film in actually looks really nice. I didn't enjoy an area that they existed in in one of these movies as much since, like, Dead Zone. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of what I'm looking for for, like, a Dragon Ball Z film. Uh, I think it's a little bit worse than Dead Zone, though, so I'll give it a five. Okay, and with that in, that means that this scored a 19 out of a possible 28. Lord Slug doing all right by group scores. Uh, it is, in fact, the second best movie after The Dead Zone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let me let me break it down for the audience real quick here. This is what our top rankings are from worst to best. Three-way tie. <laughs> the three-way tie is as follows. Bardock, the father of Goku, uh, Tree of Might, and Sleeping Princess and Devil's Castle. And then after we get through <laughs> after we get through that death march, we have uh, Curse of the Blood Rubies, which got an 11. Then we have uh, Mystical Adventure with a 13. World's Strongest with a 16. Lord Slug, now in second place with a 19. And then Dead Zone still reigns supreme with a 22. I have 28. That's uh... is our current current group rankings for the <laughs> Dragon Ball film so far. Dead Zone's a very strong film. It's going to be hard to top. Imagine you put fight scenes in this. Didn't have quite as hilariously bad of lore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very I'm very excited to see how things go because I'm fairly certain the next film uh, might be the only chance for me to give a 7 on this just based on rawness alone. Uh, but we'll have to find out by Bob reading something he did not write. <laughs> I'm very excited to read this. French stereotypes, songs by Disturbed, an evil space tyrant. These aren't things that you want on a happy camping trip. <laughs> but at least there's something, at least there's somewhere to put our sodas next time on Mondo Cool. <laughs> Cooler <laughs> revenge. <laughs> I need my pills. He's known as a refrigerator. And stop. <laughs> this month's Gigaboots videos have erupted into reality thanks to the money magic of our executive producers. Esme, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Star Falcon, Danny Richardson, Red Blaze 27, Zanki Kongetsu, and Adam Admar. Thank you very much to our executive producers. And also these guys. If you want to become powerful like our executive producers, you can head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.